Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks, and we're here with another episode of Millennia Who Talks. I think it's number 29, where we are inspiring others with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the planet Earth, okay? And today we are here with Jessica Scalota Froman. Am I saying it correctly? I hope you so. You got it. Yeah. I got it. Okay, awesome. So first of all, thank you for being with us today. For those of you who don't know, we started a little bit late. We do apologize. We had some technical difficulties, but two realtors working together, getting things done. We focus on <laughs> solutions, not on not on the problems at hand. Uh, for those of you who might be tuning in for the very first time, uh, what we'd like you to do is on the comments below, just comment where you're from, where you're listening from. If you're listening live or if you're um, watching on the playback, that's fine too. And if as we go through, if you see anything or hear anything, that you like, comment below. We can bring that up on the screen. Uh, but if you want to subscribe to the show, all you have to do is type Millennia Who in the comments below. That'll subscribe you. My little messenger bot will contact you. You say yes, and we will only contact you when we're doing the show. So let's get started without further ado. Jessica, <laughs> in, the beginning, in the beginning, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, when did you start in real estate? How old were you? What prompted you to get into it? Let's uh, let's hear your story. Okay. So I began flipping homes right out of high school with my then boyfriend, now husband. So that was my first passion into real estate. It was just kind of a side hobby that we did. And um, I was working in the corporate world, like a lot of I know realtors um, kind of start off in that industry first. I feel it was a good business that helped wire me for real estate. Definitely helped me with um, a strong work ethic. And um, I was in the sales industry. So I got a lot of formal sales training and learning how to kind of work with the public. So, but like most people in the corporate world, there is kind of a cap on my income. Um, I was kind of, you know, sometimes I'd get overlooked for promotions or there wasn't a lot of room to grow. And I realized I just didn't have a life. My life was that business. It was working 12 hours a day in brick and mortar, in a brick and mortar building. Um, you know, my only days off were Wednesdays and the occasional Sunday. So I realized that um, I wanted more from my career and my mom was a realtor. So I decided to follow in her footsteps and get my real estate license. So that's interesting. Did your mom always say like, Jessica, there's still always two ways it goes like, don't get in the business, Jessica, or <laughs> Jessica, you're coming into the family business. What was that dynamic like? Like what? I remember I was, I was also in school full time. I was a college student and I remember driving home from school and calling my mom and telling her that I wanted to become a realtor. And she tried talking me out of it initially. She said, this, is a, this isn't a career for a woman unless you have a husband who has good benefits and a really good job. And, okay. um, you know, I, I, it was kind of good advice, though, because it helped kind of motivate me even more to realize it wasn't going to be an easy business to kind of earn a good income in. So what year was it when you started it and when you started flipping houses, like what? Yeah, I started flipping houses in 2007 and I got my real estate license in 2011. So I started flipping before the crash and I got my license right after the crash when most people were escrowing. <laughs> How was the crash for, for, I know it's a perfect time. It was a perfect time to buy real estate, obviously, but how was that like buying and then trying to sell the real estate? Is that kind of what prompted you to then move into the sales part of it? You lasted three more years of doing that and your relationship lasted, which is something else altogether. You know, my wife and I have also flipped houses and I know it can be a stressful, <laughs> very stressful situation. So what was that like? And, you know, once the crash happened, how did you get through that? Um, yeah, luckily, um, it, it didn't really affect us too much from a from the real estate investment side of things. So um, luckily, we were sheltered. I know a lot of people kind of got hit hard during those times. But um, luckily for us, we didn't. So to give, since we have viewers from all over, give us um, your kind of general area. If we're looking at Pennsylvania, where are you? Everybody knows where Philly is. Like, 
where are you on that map of Pennsylvania? Yeah, I'm in Northeast Pennsylvania. So we kind of, um, I'm in the Wilkes-Barre-Scranton area, not too far from the Poconos, not too far from New York. Yeah, we're about two hours from New York and Jersey. Okay, excellent. And now when you, when you first got into real estate, you were, I mean, you're young still. So how old were you when you first started? 25. 25, that's when I started. Yeah. <laughs> <Such a high laughs> Yeah, so, but I'm now 32. So I'm now 32. Yeah. So, what were some of the challenges as, you know, as a young person starting in real estate? Because there may be somebody right now who's 25 or younger who's just getting started. What were some of your challenges when you first first began, and and like how did you overcome them? Well, I think with most realtors, you know, not many of us just immediately wow. take the leap, you know, into a commission based job. So my original challenges was managing an extremely full-time job with, you know, where I was there a minimum 48 hours a week while trying to manage real estate. Um, luckily, like I mentioned, my mom was in real estate and my husband was previously a realtor. So he pulled his license out of escrow to help me so that my clients were able to get 110% even when I couldn't be there. So um, that was my initial challenge. And it took about two years of balancing both um, and building up enough of a safety net income wise to take the leap into this business full time. So, I mean, it brings up a lot of good points that if you're a new agent starting out or you're thinking about getting into real estate, like it's a business like any other business where you have a ramp up period. It's not, we get our license and then all these boatloads of cash just starts coming in. Like it's not, not like you see on TV, right? Right. And, right. Um, I always had people, you know, say what, which came first kind of chicken or the egg you quitting the job led to you being more successful or, you know, vice versa kind of a thing. Uh, at what point did you decide that you had enough savings and, or now it was time to give it a full go? Um, well, I realized, you know, I was at a point where I had quite a few pending and I was earning like that month I was closing on like four or five months worth of salary at my job in one month. And I thought if I could do this part time, what could I do if I just dived in full time? And what was really the kind of iceberg in my situation is my great grandmother, who was like my grandmother, was um, she was kind of it was like her last moments here with us and the corporate world doesn't understand that when you need to take time off and I remember my boss being like you know I had a chance to be with my family right next to her uh, you know during her last moments and I remember my the job and my manager saying I had to be there and I was like no this is what's more important and it was like the last thing to kind of make me you know leave that kind of world and enter into this new world. And it's great because with real estate, you know, you really do have more control of your um, schedule so that you're being there for your friends and your family when they really need you. And that was important to me. Yeah. I mean, it comes back to like core values, like why you do anything that you do. And it brings up a good point to those who are starting, starting out like flexible schedule is great. That's one of the many perks of the job but also the fact that we create our own schedule is both a pro and a con because if you, if you're not used to it, it's like, Oh man, I want to sleep in today or something, you know? And the next thing you know, you're not getting any work done. What, what were some of those, like when you first started, what kind of habits? I know you were surrounded by, you have the real estate husband, the real estate mom, like did one of them mentor you or did you have someone kind of showing you the ropes, showing you the good habits? Um, yeah. Yeah, my mom was my mentor. So um, she helped me kind of get my feet wet in the industry. And um, a big part of my growth was just constantly self educating, because you know, I mean, I know here in Pennsylvania, you go to school for three months, two nights a week, you take a test, and they throw you out there to become a realtor. Really, we're learning the laws and how to not, you know, how to stay away from, you know, being sued in the industry. They don't really teach you how to measure homes, at least. <laughs> you know, um, you know, in most of the classes, you're, you're learning the law of real estate. So it's really important that, um, you know, I read as much as I could, I read as many articles. And that's some of the biggest advice I have to new realtors is you can't just take that 
little bit of training you got and get ready to run in the business. You really have to continue to self-educate and take um, additional courses and get outside of your area and learn from like the most brilliant minds in the industry. I'm just typing here, self-educate. So <laughs> be a student of the game, what were some of the ways that you did that? Just besides like, you know, taking your local classes at the real estate board, like what were some of the things that you were, podcasts or places that you go online, where did you learn or where do you feel would be good resources for people? Yeah. Uh, well, I love our triple play, our, which you've been to before too, correct? Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be speaking there this year. Oh, very exciting. I'll make sure to sit in on that class. Yeah. So um, yeah, triple play has been huge. I mean, I love what I learned there. Um, I, lo I turn to Pinterest for articles. I turn to YouTube, um, you know, so just, I'm like a sponge wherever I can learn more information. I, that's where I kind of focus my extra time. So I like that you said it's not just what's required of us, right? Cause it could be, I'm sure you have a certain CE that has to be fulfilled by Pens you know, in Pennsylvania state law, same thing with New York, same with every state. It's like, if you're going to be in an industry, why not learn the most, the most that you can about the industry so you can provide yeah. better service. Right. Right. Um, because it's not just about the CE. So many people are like, what's the class? Is there CE? And it's like, who cares? Yeah. Who cares if there's CE? So Pinterest, I like that. Tell me how you use Pinterest to kind of learn more about real estate because I'm not too much into it. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, anyway. yeah so um, Pinterest has been the inspiration for me behind, you know, a lot of my ideas in marketing or branding. Um, I love to do Popeyes. Is that kind of common in your area? Yep, pop by and visit. Yeah, so um, I don't really know any realtors doing it locally. Maybe to, after <laughs> today's broadcast, it'll kind of gain some popularity. But, um, you know, I love going to Pinterest for some ideas. They have tons of articles on how to make it as a realtor. Um, a lot of blogs on, you know, things that, you know, people wish they knew their first year in real estate. Um, yeah, just tons and tons of ideas and inspiration on there. Put up here, pop by and visit your clients. Yes, yes. Is, a great way to stay in touch after the sale. I'm, I'm sure you've heard this before, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It's an old Zig Ziglarism, and that's the best way to show them that you care is to actually visit them after the sale. Yes. Right? And so when you go there, you're not necessarily you're not going there and saying, hey, do you have any know anybody that's looking to buy or sell any real estate? Right. What's your, what, what's your conversation like when you go visit the clients? Yeah. So when I stop uh, by, it's really, it really, it's just that, just giving them a gift. I usually do it around of either a change of season or a holiday. So if there's usually something helpful for them, like a fall maintenance checklist, as well as a gift. And um, it's just touching, by, touching base, saying hi. Sometimes they're Ooh. anxious to give me a tour of the house on the improvements they've made. Sometimes they can't wait to tell me about the new news that they're expecting or that they got engaged. So, um, you know, it's nice. Facebook helps keep, keep us all connected. But not everyone is on Facebook or shares, you know, all that kind of information. So it's a nice way to kind of, you know, stay involved and build those relationships. So from a time management standpoint, do you keep the car running? Uh, I know. I think, well... <laughs> I have like this auto start on my car where it just oh. automatically shuts down when I'm parked. So. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I, cause I found like if I have another appointment, I'm just, cause I'm, I literally try to just pop by and I'll be running. Oh, just popping by. So I'm not, I don't have to stay for dinner necessarily, but at least I'm popping by, get the tour, give them my item of value. Like you said, something that, that they might treasure or that's important re related to real estate, but I keep the car running so that they know that I have to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So moving on then, the first year, two years, what were some other challenges that you faced, you know, being young and and new in the business? Mm -hmm. Anything else that you can think of? Well, um, I definitely... I definitely am a little innovative. Um, so, you know, I'm usually kind of bringing some new ideas to the area that maybe some of the people who've been in the industry for decades just aren't used to. So um, that has brought its share sometimes of challenges or, you know, feedback or questions. But, you know, as long as you're staying, you know, 
within the guidelines and rules of the real estate industry, you know, innovation is never a bad thing. So shout out to Kevin Roth who said, awesome, Jessica, proud to see NEPA <laughs> on the map, Northeast Pennsylvania, hashtag NEPA <laughs> today. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm easily distracted, obviously. <laughs> so you're saying that early in the industry, do to really, 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 lost my train of thought. No problem. No problem. So, for example, some of those earlier things that I did, um, awesome. you know, when I first came into the industry, no one really had Facebook realtor pages. So, you know, just tapping into that, um, mm -hmm. branding is huge. So, again, to new agents or agents who are struggling, you know, um, my motto is stop chasing the business and focus on attracting it. And if you just, you know, build a good brand for yourself, the business is just going to come. I remember when I was a newer agent and I didn't even have too many sales under my belt, but because I was online and people were able to easily find me, um, you know, I would bump into people and they'd go, I see your face everywhere. And it really, I'm not, I wasn't producing or even back then placing in the top, you know, I was just having a few sales a year, but they were still seeing me, you know, through avenues of social media or back, you know, I was one of the first agents locally on Zillow as a premier agent. So little things like that got my face out there from the beginning. So I know this was my train of thought that I totally got lost a minute ago. When you said out like outside the box thinking, and, and this may happen to a lot of agents, depending on your market, where you have experienced agents who've been in the business for a long time, you come to the table with a brand new idea. It could be within your office, within your real estate board or whatever. And somebody might say, that's never going to work. That'll <laughs> never work here. Right. I, I'm guessing that's what you experience. Because anytime you're outside the box or in an innovative or fresh forward thinking, you're going to get that because it's different and people don't like what's different always. True. Right. When they, yeah. you, you were on Zillow, they were like, oh, who's this Zillow? <laughs> well, you're not going to, that's not going to get you anything. Stick to your, right. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And boy, has Zillow changed. It used to account for like 56% of my business. And I think I spent maybe 40 to $90 a month. You know, now some of us agents are spending big dollars on there, not nearly getting the, um, the same type of uh, return. So Zillow has really come a long way. So you started investing in Zillow, you started closing more transactions or developing more relationships because it's not about transactions, right? Right. And at what point did you decide, I need to grow my team because there's more business that I can handle and it's like in order to provide good service, you got to, you know, when, when did you decide that? At what point? How many years into the business and how did you select your team members? Because that's Oh, very good question. So I just want to give a little shout out to my team. I have a little picture here. So this one's my mom here. <laughs> so she was easy to select, right? She's in the business and what a way to join forces. Hold on. And I'm going to bring, I'm bringing <laughs> a mother to the broadcast here so everybody can see. Um, let's see what kind of, there we go. So I got them. So <laughs> your mom is on the left. She's to your right, correct? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, right here. Yeah. In well, I, I, I brought up an online photo, so you could put that photo down. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Kellyanne in the green, she is w my very best friend since eighth grade. She was the maid of honor in my wedding. And she actually has a psychology background. And um, she, was, she has her bachelor's degree in that type of field. And um, she just took the dive this year. And she's practicing full real estate full time. And she's loving it. So um, this is her first year. So it's easy to make that decision to have her aboard my team. Shirley, uh, which is on the other side of me. She, White shirt or green shirt? Uh, like the blackish blue shirt. Okay, I might be calling. Yeah. yeah, Shirley and my mom have been really close in the industry. They've worked together, you know, knocking on doors and building their businesses together. So um, it was easy to make that decision. And you don't see Kevin there, but Kevin is actually one of the agents that I mentor. So I mentor a lot of agents who are new in the industry. And Kevin has just been my right-hand man for many, many years. And he just um, took the dive full-time into real estate from car sales. He was a very successful car salesman locally, and um, we're very good friends. And yeah, so that's kind of how I selected them. They're all really close to me, and they want to grow their business, and they believe in me, and they join the team. 
So a couple of things I heard in there. Number one, you got to work with your mama because you can <laughs> of anybody that you can trust, right? I mean, it's you, you have your mom and your best friend. You mm -hmm. said, you know, since you're so that I guess a big component of building a team is trust. Yeah. Right? Knowing that you can count on them. And then also just life experience factors in immensely into what you bring into the real estate transaction. So and I see like a lot of people, well, I'm new in real estate. It doesn't matter. You have somebody who has a psychology background, which we use in real estate every single day. All the time. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> all the time. All the time. And then you and then the, the last man, the the uh the, the luckiest of the team, I guess, the one guy amongst the team of five coming in with a with the sales background, right? So each one kind of has their own strengths, which really makes for for a great team. Now, what's that dynamic like? Is are you like the team leader? How does mom do with taking orders from you? Or is it like <laughs> you're all just a big wheel? Yeah, yeah, but I'm the team lead. And you know what my mom said? She's like, you know what? She's been doing this since I was in high school. I'm not even sure how many years. I should know that. But, um, and she, she's like, you know what? She's at the same time, there's a lot of young realtors coming in the business, going right to the top. And she's like, you know what? It's about time that I just join on a team of, you know, she knows I, I've done really well for my business. And, you know, she just really wanted to learn from a young agent. So she's been really open to my ideas and, you know, my vision for the team. So I have no formal training in team backgrounds. Here in my county, there isn't any real estate teams or even that I know of in the, you know, other local counties nearby. So um, this is just, I was at a point for the last four to five years where I kept just referring out business or um, like teaming up with agents and sharing business. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, it's not the same as having a team and that structure. So that got yeah, me think, through a few years, but. I think at one point you had reached out to me about you, like you, were, you had a team and you were, you were like, you wanted to, how to refer you know, there's a lot of different structures out there and there's if you're watching this like there's no right answer to what's the perfect team it's like whatever works best for you mm -hmm. you know jessica has her team somebody else before she had that you know she just referred business out to people that she trusted in different areas and that's another model that may work for you um it's just some it's just a matter of having that balance i think is important right because you have a you you have is it a little girl yeah i have a three and a half year old Three and a half year old. What's her name? Kelsey Madison. Kelsey Madison. So I imagine, I imagine, I will, let me say imagine, I know that that's part of what motivates you every day. Um, how do you keep like that balance? Like between, oh, I've got another transaction, I've got another listing appointment, another, and you know what? I have to go do something with my daughter. Yeah. I, I am just, I feel so blessed because I really feel like I've nailed it. You know, last year I did a, about 10 million and that was over 60 transactions but yet I still took four big vacations with my family out of the area we I took many weekend trips I had most of my nights most of my weekends so you know for the realtor who said I mean granted we're, we're always connected to our business but like I never shut down the business whether I'm on vacation or I am away for the weekend or I'm at the park with my daughter you know, my husband is very supportive because if my clients need me, they know they're going to get me um, or someone from my team if I can't be there physically. Um, but I feel very grateful that I do have that balance and able to be a top producer in my area as well. So Carol Shed Shedlock. Yes, that's my broker. He says classic pro properties is proud of you, Jessica. Uh, yeah. Shout that's out an, so that's more advice I have for new agents too in choosing your company because before I had a team or before I had support, um, you know, it really, I had to rely on a lot of my coworkers and this truly is an office. We have over a hundred agents and um, we have four offices um, among the counties. And, you know, I have to turn, I had to turn to a lot of agents often to help me with my business. And, you know, in return, I shared, um, you know, my time with other agents. So there's a lot of teamwork that comes out of this office to help make sure clients are getting the very best they could get from us. So Darcy Usavage, Us am I saying that? Savage, another one of my- Oh, you Savage, what a great last name, Darcy, <laughs> first of all. 
That's <laughs> awesome. So she said, Jess, honey, you rock, and I'm always in awe of your success. What's crazy is the amount, the level of respect I have from Darcy right from the very beginning. I was always walking into her office asking for help or assistance. So that's just a sentiment of just how supportive this office is of each other. That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about leadership because you're the chair of your local YPM, right? At the real estate board. Are you involved at the state level as well or starting to? Um, I, I would really like to put more time into the state level. Merlin okay. Weaver is our uh, president. He's amazing. I know you've interviewed him in the past. Yeah, I love Merlin. It's awesome. Yeah. So, um, but right now, um, I mostly focus at the local level. So I was the founder here locally. And um, we have over 100 members, our board, we have about, about 600 maybe members in our board. So we have a good level of participation pro. Hold on, time out. You have yeah. 600 members in your local board. Yes. And you have 100 YPN members. Yes. Wow. I'm just going to say, <laughs> wow, that is like a staggering percentage of total membership. Kudos to you. Thank you. For being the one to start that. And so let's talk about that because there may be somebody watching this that wants, you know, they don't have a local YPN. They want to get it started. And we've had a bunch of people that are involved with YPN leadership from the NAR level, we can send you the booklet of how to start one. But what what advice would you have for them? And what are some of the advantages? Because it's not just a, you know, happy hour networking oh. type of thing, right? Yeah, I think that when I first started our chapter, that was kind of the reputation of YPN. So I immediately wanted to squash that reputation. So we have our group really has a lot of substance, you know, from giving back to the community. We do an annual bullathon where we've raised over $5,000 each year for family in need. We do, um, we've done Habitat for Humanity. We usually have some kind of community organization that needs help involved in our events. Um, we have gotten down to our local state business meetings to try to get people locally involved at the state level. Um, we encourage all of our YPN members to get to triple play. I never even heard of triple play until like four years ago. And I've been in the industry a long time. So I, I, it's really important to me that I spread the word because I think it's really beneficial for realtors. Um, yeah, so we do a lot within our chapter other than just the mix and mingles. And even if we do have a mingle, there's usually an educational speaker. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's important. And, and if you're not involved in your local YPN, many of them are making sure to have that that added value of much more than a mix and mingle. I, I, I haven't been to one YPN function yet or talked to one YPN member across the United States that hasn't said, if there's a newer, younger agent that reaches out to me and has any questions in regards to real estate, I'd be happy to help. And I imagine that's a big part of it. Like, it doesn't matter what company you work for. You don't right. have to have a mentor within your company. It could be anybody anywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other nice thing about YPN, the bonds and the friendships that grow. Like some of my smoothest deals are with a YPN, you know, realtor on the other end. You know, we all have the common goal and common interest. And it's easier working with people you respect and your friends in the industry. And I met, are you experiencing like a seller's market, like many parts of the country? Yes. Yes. Big so time. A, big, a big part of that, I would imagine is like networking with your colleagues outside of the office saying, what do you have coming up? You know, I have a buyer looking for this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you know, those relationships can go a long way in a multiple offer situation where Jessica writes an offer on my listing. I know her from YPN. I'm more likely to you know, all other things being the same, right? I'm more likely to work with somebody that I have built a rapport with. And I know it'll take the transaction through to closing. Yeah, you, you, know. you nailed it. You know, that through YPN and through getting involved in our local industry, you know, integrity is really important in this industry. And it's something that I really pride myself and work really hard on. And I have had agents say to me that, you know, Jessica, I'm really happy with your offer. And you know, because it's you on the end, we're not going to leverage this, you know, to create a bidding war. And, um, you know, that's really good to know that that still means something in this business. Integrity still means something. 
Love that. And if it doesn't mean something in your area, guess what? It's never too late to bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Luck. I'm so grateful that in my county overall, we do have a lot of great realtors. And um, it's not, I, at least from me, because if you give it, you get, you get back what you put out there. But I truly feel like we cooperate so well, regardless of the brokerages, like, you know, it's just a really good county to work in, in real estate. It's not cutthroat at all. All right. So what else do you want to talk about today? I, I feel like you were recently awarded, is it top businesswoman of the planet? What is it? Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> I have something here. Hold on. I'm going to share it up on the broadcast. This is outside of real estate. You were recognized, correct? Yes. I know you're so humble, but just tell me a little bit what it was. Here it is. Top, top, yeah. 20. Top 25 women in business in the Northeast PA business journal. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. So top 25 women, zero, 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 women in <laughs> business. Okay. So what were some of the characteristics in which they selected you for such an esteemed award, if you will? Because when I saw it, I was impressed. I, you know, it's... It, we learn so much about people on Facebook, and I, and I guess it brings up another good point that what you put out there is how we get to know you, your business, and your core values. Because I learned so much, like we've we've interacted here and there on, on online, but then I see something like this, and I'm like, hold up, wait a minute, Jessica's a force to be reckoned with over in the <laughs> northeast of Pennsylvania. Uh, so is that like a group, just any kind of business people are in that organization? Yeah, like a lot of CEOs, um, business owners. Um, I think it's just women who are doing really well in business in general, um, leadership, women who give back to the community. Um, yeah, I was really honored to be selected for such a prestigious job title locally. Wow, that's great. I think everything that I'm hearing from you goes back to what we said in the beginning. Like people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Like your your YPN giving back and almost every every um, you know outing that you guys are doing, you're you're picking some kind of local charity. So if somebody's watching and they and they're looking for for volunteer opportunities or charities to give to, like how do you select them? Is it something that just you kind of pool the people that you're working with or? Well, most recently, so outside, so through YPN, we do charity. And yep. then um, I also belong to the Junior League. Have you heard of the Junior League? No. No? So it, um, the Junior League is um, a network of women, and they have different chapters throughout the country. Barbara Bush was a Junior League member. Shirley Temple was a Junior League member. And again, that's another organization where they teach women leadership skills, and we give back to the community. So... Um, I also spend some time with that. And then Team Jessica Skloda has made it a part of our mission statement to give back to the community. So most recently, we did a movie event where we rented the whole movie theater. Um, and we invited our friends, our families, our past clients. And um, we did a premiere for the movie Life of the Party. And we had raffle baskets. So there's a lot of giveaways and money raised went to a homeless shelter. And Shirley, who's a member of my team, actually called around to all of the women's shelters and homeless shelters to find out who was most in need. So we didn't, we don't just pick from a hat. We um, put some research behind it. Yeah, wow. in our annual bullathon, we have YPN members. Um, they basically share with us a family that they know in need, and then the YPN group as a whole votes, and then that's who gets the chap the check from our bulletin. So, do you do your YPN as like an advisory board, and then overall membership, or do you have it more of a committee format? Yeah, we have some committee members that help. So we have a chair and an events planner and social media. Okay. Mm -hmm. What other advice would you give to somebody who just you know, they they had a business, it went down, it's going up, it's going down, it's going up, you know, to stay consistent and just be successful and just stay in business. I mean, I guess that's, you know, it, it, so many people that come from different backgrounds that aren't used to this commission-based structure, you know, long-term strategies, what would you say have been your keys to success now in 2011, your seventh, going on your seventh year full-time in real estate? 
um, which, you know, after two years, you pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I definitely think there's, that's the nice thing about this business. There's a million ways to make, um, to earn clients trust and to um, get sales. So there's like no simple formula. But for me, I found, um, I love to just work the people within my sphere, love on the people within my sphere. I didn't do it in my first few years. I was like everybody else trying to chase that next big fish, trying to solicit people who don't even know who I am to give me business. And um, really, since I gave up on that business model and just began giving back to the people who are already in my life, the business just naturally track, you know, tracks itself. So, um, so I definitely recommend, you know, people stay in touch with their sphere, get out to lunch. I used to make excuses that I was too busy with my work day to get together for lunch because real estate at one time did consume my life. It still does, but in a different way. You know, I, I now get out and I connect with people that I love and I don't give that up for business. And, you know, getting together with an old friend for lunch keeps you on top of their mind, but also you get to enjoy catching up with an old friend at lunch. So that's kind of been the change to my business model. So, and I'm a big Brian Buffini guy. You know, he's always says like, in early in your career, you're working like a hunter. Which yes. Those of us who have come from a sales background, I was the same way where it's like, I've just programmed to prospect, close, prospect, close. And then you forget sometimes to stay in touch with the client, not because you don't want to, it's just how you're programmed to kill, <laughs> you know, not, not to kill, but you know, to, right. to, be, to be a hunter yes. where now you're more of a farmer where you're, you have these crops and you plant your seeds and, yes. you, and you water your seeds. And it's, it's such a great, man, if there's one thing that you guys can take away from this broadcast today, it's she hit it the nail on the head here that, you know, stay in touch with your clients. It does. It, it's the best return on investment because sometimes it costs you nothing. Yeah. And you enjoy it. Like I enjoy catching up with someone from my past, whether it be a client or, you know, like, you know, a friend or, you know, an acquaintance, um, you know, it's so much easier to connect and talk to those people than strangers to me, you know, and try to, you know, start from scratch. So, so to, uh, let's see, uh, any other tips? Oh, find your niche, you know, stop doing what everybody else is doing. I found that just as I come out with a new idea, there's always the followers who start to do that same idea. So I'm constantly revamping myself. I don't get upset when people are duplicating what I'm doing. It's a part of this business. It, you know what they say. Imitation flattery. is the highest form of flattery. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but you know, agents need to find your, your niche. There's so many brilliant ideas out there to make yourself stand out. So find that. Find your niche. And so it's not just what you're doing in real estate, right? But also geographically, like you specialize in a certain area. And if it's outside that area, you pretty much would refer it out. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put that in here. Find your, I, we like to say niche, okay? Niche bothers me, even though it's like, you don't call it quiche kitsch, but it doesn't, we're not from France. So find your niche and stick with it. I know it's hard, especially if you're a newer agent. You know, if you're licensed in the state of Pennsylvania, you want to tell your clients like, hey, I can go anywhere in Pennsylvania, but it actually violates the code of ethics to operate outside the scope of your expertise without your client's permission. Good point. You know, and you're not doing a, 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 not providing a good service, which is what it's all about, right? Right. So as we near the end of our broadcast, if you had to go back and hold little Jessica by the hand seven years ago, just getting started in, in, in the real estate biz, or really let's just bring it to any agent who might be getting started. You know, given all your knowledge, your expertise, your experience, all that you've been through, all the transactions, all the markets, the different markets, what kind of advice would you give? Um, I guess my bet, just always do the right thing. Like, don't ever steer away from, because sometimes we end up in sticky situations in this business. And um, like I said, integrity is so important. So continue to do the right thing. Um, 
oh, my other big advice. This is my pet peeve in the business too. Um, remember, we advise our clients. We're not the decision makers. So it's really important that we present to our clients all of the options, um, the pros and the cons of each option, and let them make the decision. Too many times I'm on the phone with a realtor and What? what they're and I have about it. So, um, so that's like my biggest advice that I kind of wish that someone put it like that to me early in the business. So I lost you there for a second. I got the beginning and the end, but I'm guessing in the middle it was you're on the phone with an agent and they're making decisions for the client, right? Yes. So you have that conversation and they're going, well, my client won't do that. And it's like, well, why don't you talk to your client first? Yeah, exactly. Before. Because again, I think one of the reasons I'm really successful in the oh. that little, but as long as I'm for both buyer and seller and you're following the laws of the real estate community. So sometimes people hear an idea and just want to shoot it down. And it's like present it to your client because they might see the benefit here too. And we're going to be able to come to an agreement and everyone's going to be happy and we're going to make it to that closing table. So, um, so that's, like I said, my biggest pet peeve is when they're telling me the answer for their client and they, they need to remember, make the decision. Oh no, we lost her. Come back. Okay. Well, we were approaching the end of our broadcast anyways. Um, Hopefully, we might, maybe we'll get her back here towards the end. But if you're watching Millennial Who Talks for the first time, please comment below Millennial Who in the comments. And you can subscribe to our broadcast. Again, you can see there's no, we're not selling anything. I don't want you to subscribe to my coaching services or anything. The only goal in, these, uh, in this real estate show is to provide advice, expertise, and to inspire others with real stories from real estate rock stars from across the world. So thanks for tuning in. We hope to see you again on Millennial Who Talks, where I think our next guest will be Ephorma Pierre from the Long Island Board of Realtors, a rising star. So if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Make it a great day.